and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Mystic Veil vale by AEG designer John DeClaire. And here I have with me Danielle, a new uh, a new reviewer here, new new uh, guest on the channel. She's actually just started getting into the more deeper, like modern style board games, and I've forced her to join me along in this wonderful review. Very excited? Yes. So this is actually one of the larger, more complex games we've actually played, and uh, she seemed to enjoy it, and so this is one of my favorites. So we'll go ahead and talk about Mystic Veil, vale, the deck building game in which you're trying to also push your luck. Pushing your luck being flipping over cards until either your luck goes sour and you're out, or you do very well and keep what you got and buy some wonderful things. Anything you want to say about the game, just in, in the like basic aspect of it being a game and, and, and your first time playing a deck builder and all that kind of stuff? Um, it was my first time, but I really liked it. I thought it was interesting and... Have you played a lot of deck builders before? Never. So you've never played deck builder at all, right? Mm -hmm. And this one is a very unique st style deck builder because not only are you basically adding more cards into a deck, which is what you normally do with a deck builder, you'll start with a certain amount, and then you'll add more and more until you get a bigger deck. In this one, it's more of a deck construction game. And I say deck builder because a lot of people don't know what a deck construction style game is. And this is called a card crafting system to be very specific, specific, specific. And these guys were all in sleeves, but for, for a very specific reason, because you're going to be adding cards into these sleeves, right? And there's certain rules as to how you can add them and how they're going to give you stronger, more useful powers up until the point where the game ends by all the points triggering off and whoever has the most points in their deck, along with the most points in their possession. These guys here is the winner. All right, you ready to talk about the game down below? Yes. So this is Mystic Veil, vale, and this is pretty much all the components for the base game, as well as, I believe, the Conclave expansion. So I have the base game plus an additional expansion that just adds more things to the game. You're going to have this area here, which is the commons, where, what do you do here? You choose which one you want. Uh-huh, to, to buy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so these, each of these areas are the different fields, and there's like the one area, the two area, and the three. Basically, the cards get more expensive as they go along. And you're going to be pick, pick, picking them up for their cost, which is in the top right-hand corner. And you'll actually be putting them into your decks here. And these are your player decks. These are going to always be in sleeves, and you'll need them to be in sleeves, because when you buy these cards here, you'll actually have to choose the ones and put them in the sleeve and make sure they don't cover up any other symbol or any other spe special area. And there's three different areas here. And they'll give you basically more power to the cards that you currently have in your deck. There is a bunch of little expansion things, which I won't talk about too much. I just want to give you the basic idea of Mystic Veil vale for the most part. This area over here, this is another way for you to score points. And there's the number one deck and number two. You draw three of each of these cards. And when you play cards from your deck, they may or may not have symbols on them. And if they do, and those symbols match these ones here, you can take these ones and score victory points at the end of the game. These little symbol down below is victory points you can get, whether they're on cards inside your deck, whether they're over here as Veil cards, or simply these tokens here that you can gather. There's a certain amount of these guys basically given to you, uh, given to you in a pool everybody is going to have to take from. And as it starts getting windled down into nothingness, the game will then end after all of them are gone and distributed to all the players. Then you'll add up all your victory points. Another interesting thing here is you're going to get these little guys here. And these guys here are basically going to give you currency, but only if you goof. So they'll start off like this, and that will determine who the first player is. You'll flip over one of these if you goof, and the way goofing works is pretty interesting. You'll take this deck here, and... Instead of a normal deck a normal deck builder where you're going to draw five and then play all those cards, discard them, in this game, you actually will flip and then you're going to push and you're going to keep going. And these symbols down here are spoils. So if you ever get spoils, after a certain amount, you're going to bust. So just like the game 21, right? And if you can manage to not bust by simply stopping before you get four of those symbols showing on the top of the deck or down below, then you are going to collect resources. So at this point, I've got two and three, and then I can choose to stop. So if I want to stop like right here, that's going to give me one, two, three, four symbols. That's the amount of currency I have. Buy any cards here based on the numbers here. Uh, so there's two and two, and I could buy those cards if I wanted to, and then place them into the deck, which will then put, go and be put into the graveyard like a normal deck builder. 
and then your turn will pass. You'll put out new cards, and say la vie, you'll keep going, basically, up until the point where all of your points are gathered. And there's a lot of cards that will give points into a player's pool, and that's pretty much the idea of the game. I think I'm not missing anything, am I? I don't think so. I think I pretty much covered all of it. Obviously, the cards, as you go deeper down, are going to be more expensive and more powerful, as well as there's going to be more symbols required in this Veil deck number two than there would be in this one here, but you can always pick these up if you have the symbols available to you down on the field. All right, so we'll come up and pretty much discuss the game. We'll, I'm more interested in talking to Danielle about what she thought about this game and her getting into modern gaming, because I figured this would be a really good one to show her as something that's a little more complex than something like Monopoly or Risk. All right. Are you ready to discuss Mystic Veil vale by my friend John DeClaire, who will be extremely hurt if you tell him you do not like his game? I'm going to go first. I'm going to just clear the air here. I, I love this game. This is my favorite deck builder by, I wouldn't say by far now. There's a couple I like that are pretty good as well, but this one is still reigning champ as to deck builders go because it adds that push your luck mechanic, you know, the one where you're flipping over the top of the deck. Mm -hmm. I really, really like that about this game. There's a lot that it has to offer, and there's a lot of extra things. Like we were talking about these little tokens here. If you didn't want to play with just these, you remember how these work? Yeah. How does it work? Um, you get an extra you get an extra turn, right? You, you get an extra token, right? Yeah. So when you're out, you flip one of these over if you bust, and you get an extra currency on your next turn if you want to use it if you bust. So it's a way of kind of letting you catch up. It's not extremely useful, not compared to these guys here. These ones here are a little more powerful. And that's basically what the expansion provides, at least the Conclave. Just more good stuff. The artwork on this game is fantastic. It reminds me of Magic the Gathering. It's very beautiful. It's very fantastical or fantasy based. I really, really liked it. Uh, it's got this feeling of like going into the forest and like, I don't know, saying hi to some elves. True. I just, I really, really enjoy the artwork. I really like the game in general. I've probably already talked about this game a ton, but I've actually never done a video on it, which is pretty odd. And I like it a lot. This is a big, big game for me, but I'm actually more curious as to what you think, because you've never played a deck builder or a push your luck game, a deck card crafting system game. So, I mean, for you, is the game lengthy? Is it too long? Is it too short? What do you think? Um, it is pretty long, but I stayed interested in it and I didn't get bored or like toward the end of a game. Sometimes you feel just who's going to win. It needs to be over. I didn't really feel like that. I just kind of I was enjoying it the whole time. It feels like you're, as you're building, you're wanting to keep making it better and better. Yeah. And you feel like it's getting better every time you, like, flip over your deck. Yeah. Like, you're playing your cards down. And after you've gone through your entire deck and you've, like, put the cards you wanted into it, you shuffle them back up and you go again. You're like, oh, wow. I know that I've made this. And it feels like I've made this. And, oh, this card used to be a piece of <gasps> I'm going to bleep that now. i got to bleep that for family-friendly purposes. But now it's actually really, really good. And I, I notice that it happens a lot for me. And I get to cover up. There's certain cards that you cover actually other cards and whatnot, which is kind of cool, but I like that aspect of the game. And the, the push luck, luck mechanism is something I hadn't seen before up until the game Va Valiant Wars, which is new, but it's a very short version of this game that doesn't involve the crafting system. So artwork, how about the artwork for you? This, this? I really like it. And I feel like, like you said, it's very mystical fantasy-like. Yeah. I like that style a lot. Uh, have you played any games that have the mystical fantasy feel before? No. Nope. Like I said, she's she's a fresh meat for the grind, uh, meat for the slaughter, or whatever you want to call it. As far as board games go, we've played a couple games now. Can you think of the other, the other board games we've played? Any names? Like right off the top, I'm just gonna try and like throw some curveballs here. We just played what? I don't even know what that was called. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. We're building what? What were we building? Towns. Uh huh. Tiny towns. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And we played the mind. We did? The mind, where you're playing the numbers and you're trying to play them in order. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. That yeah. one was my favorite. Your favorite? Yeah. See, this one's a lot different than those, right? This is like yeah. more of a medium style game. It's got a thickness to it, but it's also not too complex after a couple rounds. You understand mm -hmm. how to play this game relatively quickly, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, you seem to have gotten it done. you like one of those people who like to learn as you see it played. And after a good, like, two or three rounds she was just like on it she was just sticking them through i'm like okay she, she's got it you know some some gamers that are new and jump into this hobby this is not a game i would probably throw at them the first day that they came over to game but you seem to get it you were getting these veil cards pretty often too yeah you I, liked a lot how, of these. I liked how it was secretly competitive like you didn't know how many points everybody had until at the end and you weren't like 
necessarily fighting against me. We yeah. weren't we weren't necessarily working together. I would take cards that maybe you wanted, but that didn't necessarily mean I was purposefully doing that, which is a nice twist to the game as well. Mm -hmm. So overall, what do you how do you think about this game? Like, is this a game you probably wouldn't play this more than once in maybe like a sit down session? I would imagine. Probably not, because it is pretty long, but I do like it. Yeah. You would play this again? Mm -hmm. Would you want to play with more than just the base game, like, as you continued learning more? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. It's pretty damn good. Tight. Yeah. Hey, overall rating, one out of ten stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't even do stars on this channel, but this is a special video. Uh, seven. Seven? Straight seven? Yeah. Right, so five is the average, or five is an F? Are we doing grades or stars? I don't know. Because if it's grades, then that makes it look like I gave it a C. <laughs> <laughs> if so if it's stars, that means it's above average, right? Yeah. Okay. I would give it an 8.572. It's a solid, solid grading scale. 8.572. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being on and talking about Mystic Veil vale, and you being a first timer kind of jumping into one of these type of games is kind of cool kind of cool to see because I haven't, I wouldn't throw this game on pretty much just anybody their first couple times playing games but you seem to grasp it fairly quickly which I was was not only impressed but I was also humbled by your your playing experience and I think you even beat Callie yeah Callie got crushed she did par she did terrible this game yeah. we should play this game more we should I actually win Callie all right Thank you for watching, guys. And as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Me? Check. Check, check, check. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. That's like A plus right there. Oh, yeah. See, See you guys, guys next, next time. time. That was perfect. Okay. That was perfect. It's like a gr I would gr I'm gonna grade you a B plus. That's better eight, than my high school grade. Eight point six five two. Yeah, way better than high school. Yeah, this game's good. I like it. It's a lot of fun.